Hey, this is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps, and today I want to tell you about our off-grid mobile solar trailer. So we're out here on the ranch today, and I want to tell you about how handy this trailer comes in for projects across the whole property. Whether we're running a sump pump, we need to plug in a welder, if we need to run an electric fence, you know, those off-grid projects where you need power, uh, but you don't have utility power available. This thing comes in so handy, we hook it up to the truck, we drive it over to the job site, and we start working. So let me give you a quick overview of this trailer and all the various features. Uh, we're in compact travel mode and this is where we're driving around. So we've had the solar panels deployed, the light towers down, it's ready to take in off in the road and wherever we need to go. So up here we have eight solar panels. These are monocrystalline solar panels at 345 watts each for a total of around 2700 watts which is great to recharge our whole power system which is down below in these cabinets. And so in this first cabinet we have our 10,000 watt off-grid hybrid inverter. This thing outputs 110 and 220 volts to cover all the jobs you need to do. In the back over here, we have our battery bank. Right now we have eight 160 amp hour gel batteries. These are great maintenance free batteries and so we don't have to add water in the future. So let's walk on over to the front of the trailer and over here we have our 20 foot telescoping light tower. This is great for evening and nighttime projects where you need to continue work on into the dark. It has four 100 watt LED lights which are wide angle to illuminate your whole job site. Let's go head on down to the job site. We're going to get everything deployed and then I'll go through how everything's working. So we're here at the back of the ranch where we want to get this system deployed. And the great thing is it only takes about five minutes to get everything set up so we can quickly be up and running and then at the end of the day we can put it all back and drive it back to the shop for storage overnight for safekeeping. If you do want to leave it overnight we do have the jack here so we can put down the jack and get the truck out of here and leave this system deployed and ready to go. Um, but for now we're just going to keep it hooked up to the truck. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to deploy our eight solar panels and it's really great. What we did here is we put in a hydraulic system to take care of all the heavy lifting for you. So we deploy our side panels and then lift up the system and get the right angle to the sun using our hydraulics. So it's really easy to do. First of all, we're going to deploy our rear panels here. And so we have our two locks, one here and one here. And we want to do this in a horizontal orientation. And so when we do those two locks, we can simply pull out our four bottom panels. And then they're going to lock back in place. All right, so in the bottom here, we have four panels and we have four panels, and then we're gonna deploy our four side panels. These are all in an easy glide rail system where they deploy and then lock sturdily in place. You do the same thing down here. Great, we have our two side panels deployed and locked in. Then we go around to the other side and get our other two. So in about 30 seconds, we have our eight panels deployed, and now we're gonna get the right angle. And so we're gonna look at where the sun is in the sky, and we're gonna get perpendicular to it for maximum sun capture. Over here, we have our hydraulic pump. This is gonna take care of all the heavy lifting. And then our quick deploy. So from here, we can simply raise it up.
quickly, within a couple of minutes, we have eight solar panels deployed, capturing around 2,700 watts of power from our solar. We can close this up and we'll head on over to the other side to see it's a little bit of a cloudy day, so I can't promise too much power, but we'll go see how much we're capturing. And once those clouds pass, I'll expect to capture a couple thousand watts of power from the sun. Here in this compartment, we have our off-grid hybrid inverter. And this is an all-in-one system, so it takes power from the sun using maximum power point tracking technology. It takes that power and puts it into our battery. And then it also handles the conversion, so it's a 48-volt battery bank. It's a 48-volt system. And it takes that 48 volts of DC and converts it to both 120 and 240-volt AC. So that can power both small power tools and larger ones that run on 240. So we look down in here, we have our two DC disconnects. This is going to both of the solar arrays. We can totally shut off power from our solar arrays to our system, or we can leave them on, which is going to allow us to charge the batteries. Right here to the left of this is our breaker box. So has, this has a bunch of different options for output. So we have our breakers here for safety, and then we have a couple of different plug options, whether you're using 240 volts, a uh, high current, uh, this is a 30 amp, 120 volts. And then we also have our GFCI protected 120 volt, uh, 20 amp output. So no matter what your load, there's gonna be a plug for you. And if you need it, there's adapter plugs available. If we need to go from one of these to say a locking 30 amp, um, there's power cores that'll adapt to exactly what you need. So with this system, we have 10,000 watts of output power. That's 10 kilowatts. And we can go a little bit higher than that, say 15 to 20 for a really short amount of time when we need to start up motors. And so that's really handy for directly starting up to a two horsepower pump or motor. And if you have a larger pump, three or five horsepower, you're able to start that if you have either a soft start or a VFD on it to help diminish and reduce that startup current necessary. But with 10,000 watts, it's enough to start table saws, charge drills, run welders, basically whatever you're doing out on the farm or ranch, this thing's gonna be able to power it up. So in most days, the solar is gonna be enough to charge your batteries and keep everything operating correctly. But we do understand on cloudy days, you do want backup options. And so that's why we added in AC input. So you can recharge your battery, whether on a generator or the night before at home, you can keep your batteries fully charged for cloudy days when you need to still run and operate. So let's go check out the batteries, which is storing all the power this system's using. And those are located here in the back. And our baseline configuration, like I mentioned, comes with eight 160 watt gel batteries. And those are deep cycle lead acid batteries, maintenance free, so they're fully sealed, so you don't have to check them over time and add water, which is a great feature versus the older flooded lead acid batteries. They're also great for extreme climates, and they're really good on long-term cycles. So with these batteries, we can do around 1,800 to 2,500 cycles on them without a significant degradation. So they're made for years and years of reliable performance. So this base configuration comes with eight of these batteries, and we can add additional four batteries on if you want longer run times and additional storage. You might be wondering, how long does it take to recharge those batteries? And with our eight solar panels and our eight batteries, we could recharge in about four hours, and if we add on the additional four batteries, it'll be about six hours of recharge time to go from empty to completely full. So this battery bank is what's called a 48 volt system, so it means we have four 12 volt batteries in series in order to produce 48 volts that goes into our hybrid inverter. We're also offering the option to upgrade to a lithium iron battery bank. Each battery is 100 amp hours and 51 volts, and the battery bank is expandable, meaning you can choose whether you want one, two, three, or four lithium batteries in series. So with the lithium iron batteries, one of the bigger benefits we're gonna get is the number of cycles. And so when we look at batteries, we're looking at around 20% degradation in the amount of cycles that go with it. With the lead acid batteries, we're gonna look at around 2,000 to 2,500 cycles before we see 20% degradation. But with lithium iron batteries, we're looking at more like 6,000, 6,500 cycles before we start to see that degradation. But the good news is after those cycles, we still have 80% of our battery capacity available. So that means years and years of reliable performance, whether you're using the gel batteries or whether you're using the lithium iron batteries. One of the other big benefits of lithium iron batteries 
is when we look at the storage capacity and what amount of that storage capacity is actually usable. So with lead acid batteries, we like to limit our capacity to around 60% of full. And so that means we can use 60% of the storage before we really want to get it recharged. And that's going to help maintain those high cycle counts in the 2000 plus range. With lithium iron batteries, the full amount of the storage capacity is usable. So that means we can take them basically down to zero and back up to 100 without affecting our overall lifetime of the batteries. That means even though the numbers and the storage capacity is slightly smaller for the lithium iron batteries, we can use all of that capacity. And so there we're getting higher performance and longer run times for an equivalent amount of storage capacity. Finally, let's go take a look at our light tower. We'll get it deployed and see how it all runs. Not much we have to do here. All we have to do is start cranking to get our light tower. So you can see with a couple of turns of the handle, we're able to adjust the exact height of our light. And that's really nice when we're doing different jobs. If we want a little bit brighter in a shallow area, we can keep it a little bit lower, but more intensity. But if you have a higher, larger area to illuminate, then we can go up much taller. We need a little bit less light, but we're gonna cover a much larger area. So I just noticed the sun peeked out behind those clouds. Um, getting nice and bright, and I wanted to go in and check and see exactly uh, how much power we're getting at this point. We weren't getting much before. If we go over here and look, we can see uh, right now we're getting 800 watts, and I saw it peak up a second to around 1200 watts. And so it's starting to charge up. Our battery is at 51.5 volts. We're really looking around like right around 53, 54 volts when we get this fully charged up with no load on it. Um, so as that sun continues to come out, we're going to see that number climb. We'd expect on a nice sunny day for it to go up to around 25, 2600 watts of power, really recharging these batteries quickly. So we're done for the day. Let's get this thing deployed. Again, it only takes a couple of minutes. We're going to get our light tower down. We're going to lower our panels and get it all stowed back in here. Get out our hydraulic controller. It's right here. Other great thing is magnetic. You can put it over here while you're working. Get this back down. Panels are back down. Then we quickly stow our panels back in. Again, they all lock back in place. Then everything goes right back up in here. There we have it, ready to drive back. We're gonna stow this for the night, then come out tomorrow and start another project.